Hello there, hi. Today I'm going to talk about Amazon book reviews. When I first published um, in 2017, I was absolutely petrified at the idea of receiving um, one two-star reviews. And I lived in fear of it. Well, I didn't need to live in fear because nobody was interested in uh, my uh, book. Um, then I published a second one before the end of 2017 um, and they did not go fleeing off the um, shelves. So I, I really did not have to worry. Um, but then gradually time passed by and I made a few changes, etc., etc. changed the covers, published another book and then sales started to come in. Um, and then, you know, I had a few five star and four star. And then I think the time probably came when I got a three star and I thought, oh, well, OK, that's kind of that's acceptable. That's bearable. But I was then in a weird kind of way. I was just waiting. I was hoping for a one star review. It's like, you know, when you know something's coming and you want to get it out of the way. And I can't even remember when it came, but it did come. Uh, it, it, it definitely did come. And you know what happened when the first one star review came? Well, nothing, nothing happened at all. Nobody died. I didn't die. The sky didn't fall in. Um, and then um, then I realized I don't know when it started, um, but Amazon started allowing people to just leave ratings rather than reviews. And in a way, it's a bit of a double edged sword, isn't it? Because if you get um, a one or two, I don't think three star ratings are too bad because I've seen people leave very favorable reviews with three stars. Um, so I suppose it depends on it's all subjective, isn't it? Whether what you think three, two, one, five star, it depends what. Well, five and four star, obviously, we know what it means. But some people think three is, you know, really good. But one or two. Well, I think that's, you know, clearly they're not quite happy with it. So I thought, well, that's not fair because anybody can leave a one or two star rating and not explain themselves. You know, so you don't know why they didn't like your book. Um, it may be they just don't like you. It may be that they disagree with some of your views or your opinions in the book. There's no explanation. Um, but then on the other hand, if they just leave a rating and not a review, I kind of think it works in the author's favour because nobody really knows what that person didn't like about the book. So therefore, they're probably not going to take too much notice of it unless there's loads of one and, uh, and two star reviews, that is, of course. Um, so now um, the, uh, the most reviews I've got on one book currently today, as I'm making this video, is 126. And it's standing, I think, at 4.2 stars so it shows up on Amazon as you know as if it's a four star book um, and at first I was really disappointed when it dropped down to that I mean I, I was gutted when I looked at Amazon I every morning I get up um, I make a cup of tea I come back to bed for about 20 minutes while I drink my tea and then I go through and check everything I go on KDP and I have a look how many sales I made the day before I go on Amazon see if there's any new reviews um, check my bank account, they see my direct debits have gone out or what have you. Um, then have a quick look on Facebook. <laughs> That's my morning ritual. I know there are people who say you shouldn't do any of that um, until later on in the day. And I check my emails, of course, obviously, there's always emails there. Um, but um, when I first saw that, I was really, you know, I was really gutted. Um, but actually, it hasn't it hasn't prevented sales. Um, sales haven't gone down because I'm now um, 4.2 stars um, and because I've got um, I've got one, two, three, four and five stars on all of my books now. Um, so, well, on I've, I've recently published a new one that's only got um, two stars on it at the moment, two five star ratings on it at the moment. Um, and it is the way it is because people want to see that it's real, you know, because it is a bit suspicious unless you've got a really, really good book that most people love. And there are books out there that that that, that fits. OK, that that's genuine. Um, but it does look a little suspicious. So don't be afraid of one or two star reviews. And the other thing is refunds. The first time I didn't even know about refunds and I was checking my reports on KDP ages ago 
and I noticed refund. Well, I took it really personally. So um, people, I don't know how it works fully, but people have um, X amount of time um, if they buy an ebook, purchase an ebook in which they can um, ha uh, have their money refunded. And I think that they can't have read the whole book. I think if they've read the whole book, I think it's a bit like going into a restaurant and eating a meal and then complaining about it. So the, I think there are some rules there. Um, but the first time it happened to me, I was I, I was I was personally offended. Um, and then I started worrying about percentages. Now, I haven't had many refunds. And I did Google it and lots of other people have had refunds. And then there seems to be a notion that if it's something like one, two percent of your overall sales, that's to be expected. I think it's something like one to three percent of your overall sales of ebooks that, you know, you can expect refunds. Last month I had three refunds and it was interesting because they were all on the same day. Well, at the same time, actually. And it was three different books. Now, it, it that could be a coincidence. It could be that three different people each read a different one of my books and didn't like it. Or it could be one person um, who um, just didn't like any of them, maybe read one and didn't like the others and, and got their money back. Um, but by anyway, by that time, I'd gotten over it, you know, that you're going to get the odd refunds. That's it. You, you might as well just accept it. And as long as they're not, you know, there's not tons of them, then it's nothing to to worry about. Um, so yeah, so that, that was three in a, t all month, last month, three refunds and all on the same day. So I did a while ago as well. I think when I was taking it personally, I, um, Googled it to see what, you know, what are other people saying about this or, and then I got off on this thread or found myself on another thread. And there were people who there who admitted that they regularly, um, get, um, refunds. And it doesn't matter whether the book has cost 99p. It really doesn't matter. They will get their refunds for various reasons. And one woman said that she always reads the ending first. And if she doesn't like the ending, she automatically goes for a refund. It's got to have a happy ending and it's got to have the kind of ending she likes. So you've got to remember that, you know, anything you're doing out there in the world, um, you are going to come across some strange people. You're going to come across some lovely people, but you're going to come across some very strange people with some very strange ideas. And um, yeah, and so I, to me, that's kind of one of them. Um, so yeah, so if your book doesn't have a happy ending the way she likes it, she's not going to read it and the rest of it and she's going to get her money back. But I'm sure that Amazon are aware of people who are serial refunders. Um, and they probably jump on that, you know, from a great height. I would imagine that they do. So anyway, reviews, the kind of reviews that, you know, um, that bug you. So when you're obsessed with reviews, which I used to be, I am, I check every day now, uh, once a day I check and really that's too much. It really is too much. Once a week or once a month is probably a good idea. Um, but at least I'm not checking every, every hour anymore, like I used to do. Um, there are, you find yourself when you are obsessed reading a lot of other people's reviews as well and then getting indignant on their behalf. Um, so it's not as if you, you read other people's reviews and go, ha, you know, um, up yours, other author. It's you think, oh, that's a bit mean or that's a bit harsh, you know? Um, and then the fear sets in with yourself, you know, you think, oh my God, if they can say that about that book, what are they going to say about my book? But the kind of, the, there's two kinds of review that, um, irritate the heck, heck out of me. And one of them is, um, when it says nothing new or groundbreaking here. And well, that will re that will really relate to um, nonfiction books. And I've seen that a lot. I've not had it on my books yet, um, um, but it could be that the people who are leaving ratings, they may think that they're just not saying it. So I don't know, but I've seen it on other people's books. And, you know, where human philosophy is concerned, um, I don't think there is anything new or groundbreaking. There isn't, is there? You know, there can't be. We're still, you know, books that were published hundreds of years ago we're still, um, you know, um, writing about the same stuff. You know, the, the same kind of philosophy still applies. There's just different ways of um, expressing it. So, you know, so somebody might enjoy my style 
and not enjoy somebody else's and vice versa. It might be the same kind of information, but the way in which it's delivered makes a difference. So I always think that having been around the spiritual arena for a long time and the self-help arena for a long time, I know that there are people who are serial seekers. They just seek and seek and seek and seek and seek. They're always looking for the next big answer, the next big thing, but nothing ever changes in their life. So I, I don't know. I think that maybe those people, they're just, I don't know, they're looking for some holy grail of an answer that will suddenly transform their life. Whereas in actual fact, the information and the knowledge that they need is probably already there in front of them. But maybe it requires some thinking, maybe it requires some effort. I don't know. So yeah, that that always bugs me. Um, and uh, reviews that are just, they're just personal, you know, they're just really personal. It's like a, a personal attack on the, um, the author. And again, I haven't had that. Well, nobody said it in a review and I'm not saying it will never happen, but I have seen it happen to other authors. Um, and I've noticed things like, um, especially with spiritual books, people get really upset if God is mentioned. And then other people get really upset if God isn't mentioned. And then there are people out there who know. We see, we know the author's completely wrong because um, I know that this is how it is or I know that's how it is. Well, of course they don't. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's tricky. And it was like the very first time I made a YouTube video. I lived in fear. I lived in fear of being ridiculed and trolled. And the fact of the matter is I wasn't interesting enough or important enough for anybody to even bother doing that. Um, again, I'm not saying it won't happen. Um, but by now, anyway, I have got a, a thicker skin. I mean, I still prefer um, a four or five star review, obviously, than I do um, three, two or one. But I'll take a three. I'll, you know, I'm OK with that. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, it's horses for courses. If you're going to put yourself out there, if you're going to put the contents of your mind out there, you know, for other people's consideration, then you're going to have to be open to to the feedback, whether it's intelligent feedback or not, whether it's helpful feedback or not. You know, it's just part of the deal, isn't it? So, you know what, don't worry. The, the, the greats, the greats out there have one star reviews. I mean, I look up some of my favorite authors and um, get indignant over the nasty reviews that are left over their books. Like I love, you know, Michael Connolly um, uh, for one. Uh, and I've read some of Stephen King's books, um, um, but I really love uh, Michael Connolly and um, Lee Child. Now, there are a lot of people who don't like Lee Child or they leave really nasty remarks, but I think, well, hell, you know, there's enough people buying his books. Uh, so if it's good enough for Lee Child and Michael Connolly, then it's certainly good enough for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there you go. So if you... Um, I, I, I'm making videos as a newbie indie author. And I say newbie, I know I, I published first in 2017, but I'm still a newbie. Um, and really a lot of, it all really started to move forwards at the beginning of 2020. So it took that long to start getting any real momentum. And that was because I had a lot to learn, you know, a huge amount to learn. So, um, and I'm still learning now. So, you know, I might be able to help you with something, um, you know, there's a few topics I'm going to cover. So if you're a newbie independent author, if you are a, um, you know, you want to, you're really looking to publish your first book independently um, and you might want to check in. There might be something I've got to say that could be useful or encouraging to you, but it can happen. I promise you, look, you know, here's a collection of my books here and I'm not about to retire by any stretch of the imagination, but I am receiving money every month from Amazon. Um, and so it shows me that I am on a, you know, I'm on the right pathway to, to what I want to achieve. Yeah. Okay, then. Bye.